Welcome back, listeners. Today, I will be sharing my past life known as Abu Shakar. This particular life was a resting life, and I know for those of you who are following my lives, you know that I have had some pretty traumatic lives already that I've shared with you listeners. So it is with a pleasure that I share this wonderful resting life. I had visions of this bazaar in this life when I was around 12 years old, before my near-death experience. I would often hear the sounds of a bazaar as well as a blue scarf spinning around and lots of activity associated with the bazaar, the sounds and the incense, but I could not get any more. But I oftentimes would fall asleep thinking about this wonderful memory of this beautiful bazaar. I hope that you will enjoy it as much as I do. I became aware that a distant voice was calling a name. Abu! I would hear it randomly over a period of weeks that stretched into months and then into years. But there was nothing else, just the haunting, imploring sound, Abu. I decided to do some research to see if I could gain any insights, and I learned that this was a name often used to refer to a man that showed respect, usually a father figure. I wondered who this person could be and why I was hearing his name. Whose voice was it? It sounded so imploring. Was it calling his name for help? No, it sounded more happy and joyful. It sounded like a child's voice, or maybe it just felt that way to my ears. I enjoyed the sound and would always stop when it drifted into my awareness. Abu! And it would bring a smile. So although I had the memory when I was a much younger child, I didn't remember the past life itself until I was an older person. On the day that I remembered this life, I had a great deal of anxiety because a young family member was going away on a trip. They would be gone for weeks, and I worried that something would happen while they were away. I also worried that they would never know how I felt about them. I had not taken the time to go visit the family and the child before it left. I feared that there would be words unspoken between us, but my three-year-old grandchild was too young to understand my fear. I could only give a hug and a long goodbye and an effort not to frighten them with my fear. I resolved to go to bed, rest, and be alone. I began to hear the voice calling, Abu! I relaxed back into the sound of the voice to escape and began to drift back into the past. Through a haze of emotions, time, and space, I began to hear, Abu! Abu! Abu Shakar! Wait! Wait for us! Abu! I could faintly hear the sound of voices on the wind. I started to be aware that I was drifting outdoors, and I decided to let the memory unfold. I covered my head and tried to clear my mind, getting as comfortable as possible. As my mind drifted, I became aware that I was standing at the base of a great mountain range with snow-covered tops. I was surrounded by a vast meadow, and I immediately recognized the Himalayas in the distance. There was a chill in the air, and I felt a slight shiver. I looked down and became aware that I was sitting on a camel. From the height, I could see across a great green spanse of meadow, with tall green grass and spring flowers blooming all around. I felt my body and realized I was a man with a long beard. As I ran my fingers through the hairs... It felt silky, and it smelled of lavender. I held the hairs up and saw that it was gray. I ran my hands down my body and realized I was wearing flowing robes. My head was covered. Abu! Abu! Abu Shakar! Wait! Wait for us! It is prayer time! Came the sound of a familiar young boy's voice in the distance. My eyes swept across the greenery 
and I saw many familiar faces. Abu Shakar, it is prayer time, came a voice very close to me. I looked down and saw the excited faces of a group of young boys. Their faces shined in the afternoon light. Their smiles were electric. As I took a closer look around, I recognized all of the faces and realized they were all family and friends. I became aware that I was the leader of a group of nomads, of a specific group of nomads. The word Afsirian drifted into my mind. And the year 1531. Some of the members were riding camels, others were walking. Another group of young men were running towards me to announce it was prayer time. I was Muslim. I sat smiling and enjoying the excitement of the boys. I loved prayer times. It was a joyous moment shared by all. I dismounted and hugged the young boys as they reached me. Abu, can I lead the prayers today? Please, I have been practicing, came a voice from a young boy with pleading eyes. And I said, yes, you may lead the afternoon prayers. Go and choose a good location. Immediately, the young boys dashed off, prayer rugs in hand, jumping and laughing. This was a perfect moment in time. I was in a land that I loved, surrounded by the most important people in the world to me. The day was glorious, a glorious gift. We had food and water. There was no war. We enjoyed peace and prosperity. The climate was amazing. Living the life of a nomad was joyous, and I was able to see the world, or at least my part of it. The breeze smelled so sweet, and happiness poured over me. I felt blessed and thankful. This was a much different life than others that I remembered. This was a peaceful, resting life to nourish my soul, and I definitely needed it. As I stood watching the boys, I suddenly was aware of a woman appearing to my right and gently touching my arm. Let me walk with you, Abu, she gently guided me towards the young men. Her touch was so light and loving, I smiled down at her. She was wearing a beautiful head covering. I realized that I could not walk very well on my own, and I needed a cane or help. We walked a short distance where the nomad group was gathering together, lining up for prayers. The boys had taken their position at the head of the group. The one young man began the call to prayers, a haunting, summoning, pleading call for all souls to stop and take refuge in the words of Allah. I lowered my head and looked directly into the eyes of the woman I was walking with. I was momentarily frozen by her eyes. I stopped to stare into her face, memorizing all of her delicate features. She had lovely black eyes and a sweet face. She shyly put her eyes down and asked if anything was wrong. No, there is nothing wrong, and I smiled at her. I lifted up her chin so that I could look into her eyes. This was my beloved daughter, Afsahar. I became aware that I felt completely blessed when she entered my life and has taken care of me faithfully since her mother, Rashida, passed away long ago in childbirth. I took a moment to hug her and thank her for caring for me. We walked together over to the others and began to perform our prayers. As the prayers began, the moment began to fade, and I thought the memory was over. When I realized that I was in a different location and I was receiving a different glimpse of his life, my eyes slowly looked around to take in all the information that I was receiving. Some tribe members were hunters, while others were gatherers, and yet others were those that did the preparations. From cooks to medicinal preparing, 
a tribe member who had a special task that they enjoyed would be given jobs in line with their skills. All tribe members worked at some job or task from babysitting to camel trainers. The camaraderie, goodwill, and genuine respect amongst the tribe was very deep. The love for all surrounded the entire camp. Plants, animals, fish, bark, everything were harvested along the different trade routes. Some tribe members gathered a vast array of different items for medicinals, as well as consuming them ourselves. Some were made into spices and itters, which are intense perfumes. When I connected with Abu's mind, I could see a calendar of sorts inside of his mind of when and where to find just the right items growing at just the right time of day and year. It was not only which items, but also when was the right time to harvest as well as consume. They would also prepare these products for sale at the bazaar. A person with a health issue would see our resident medicine woman for items to cure ailments. Our cooks were skilled at preparing wonderful healthy foods for all. We raised camels and the young children had the job of brushing them daily. The hair was saved and spun into material for the looms to make great beautiful custom carpets. I found it intriguing as myself to see these Big looms disassembled for travel when our journey needed to continue when this area's crops had been harvested. Some of the children had the job to sort the various colors of camel hair into baskets to create color, wondrous natural textile colors and patterns. The entire tribe working in harmony was joyous to see especially when I thought about the current troubling times that I'm living in in 2023. But the vision began to fade, and I thought that this would be the end of my glimpse. But suddenly, I was awakened by loud clamoring outside my tent and men's voices giving instructions and orders. And I went outside under the breaking morning light for prayers and realized that today was a grand day. Excitement buzzed in the air, and I was filled with excitement. Today, we would be going to the bazaar to sell our wares. We traveled through many countries on the Silk Road and sold our wares at various bazaars. The demand for our amazing camel carpets was great, and the tribesmen eagerly climbed onto our camels for the day's ride. It would be a glorious day. In the distance, we could hear the faint sound of music as we got closer, and we knew that our caravan was headed in the right direction. Immediately, I personally recognized the sound of the bazaar, that distant calling sound that had played in my own head since I was young. It brought memories of sights and sounds of a faraway exotic place always beckoning me to return to the memory that was so sweet. On arrival at the bazaar, all the sights and sounds surrounded us. The smell of incense, aromatic meats cooking on open fires, savory spices, flowers, and other aromas drifted on the wind. Loud noise from music to loud voices to calls to buy different wares soon surrounded us. Our young tribesmen eagerly unloaded our wares into a waiting stall, and immediately they were surrounded by buyers. I slipped off my camel to greet friends and make acquaintances with those I had not seen recently. I walked down through this year's bazaar and marveled at how large it had become. I wondered how much bigger could it get by next year? I remembered a time when the bazaar was much smaller, and we all knew each other back then. This year, it was teeming with life, buyers, sellers, beggars, money. My senses were assaulted by such variety, and by the end of the day, I was ready to rest. I had eaten too much, and sleep was calling my name. 
The prayer area was filled with family, friends, newcomers, and after I had enjoyed the moment to the fullest, I stopped at the door to my tent for one last second. I turned and took a deep breath and tried to memorize the moment. With my age, it could easily be my last. After I adjusted myself on my favorite carpet, a cool breeze assisted me as I drifted to sleep. My next glimpse into this life found me lying in bed gravely ill. I was dying. I had had a wonderful long life, and I shared it with people that I genuinely loved. I have been blessed to know Islam to its greatest depths, permeating every cell of my being in a joyous chain of memories. I prayed every single day of my life, never missing a single prayer time from the time that I was aware. This life had been so filled with blessings, I began to realize that it was my favorite past life memory as myself. It expanded my awareness of peace and tranquility. This entire life, I had felt like I had been on a vacation of sorts, and I had so enjoyed each and every day, each and every person. I was aware that I was a popular, kind, giving, pious man, but my end was near. I became aware that I was surrounded by men, women, children who were crying. My daughter was on my right-hand side, her head leaning on my shoulder. She shuddered, wailing, and tears flowed down her soft face. She was praying for me in between sobs and wails. I realized that she had never married. She had dedicated her life to taking care of me. Now would be the time for her to move on and have her own life. I hugged her and gently whispered that I wished her peace and happiness. I thanked her again and again for her sacrifices for me and for her kindness. Then I became aware that I was moving out of my body. I just drifted up and it was without pain. I hoped I was drifting towards paradise and my heart jumped with joy and I was looking straight up into the sky anticipating a rejoicing moment. When I was approximately 10 feet above my body, I turned around and looked back at the life I was leaving behind. I smiled and I wanted to see it one last time. I saw that beyond the tent there were men, women, children, and my favorite camel. Everyone was gathered outside my tent. I had been a good and kind leader. I smiled at their loyalty and my heart felt great joy. But abruptly, I looked down and I was looking straight into my daughter's eyes, who was looking up beyond me towards paradise. For a moment, I was able to see the future. It flashed before my eyes in that moment of change and fear shot through my veins. Wait! I yelled so loudly. Frantically, I struggled to get back inside my body. Just one final moment. Just one final word. I had to talk to her one last time. I yelled loudly, Stop! Wait! No, I cannot go! Please, one more moment. Just one more word. But tragically, I continued to drift away. I watched as my daughter's tears ran down her cheeks, and I became agonizingly aware that she would never be the same, that she would never marry and enjoy life, that she would grieve for me the rest of her life. There was nothing I could do to stop it, and it hurt every cell in my body to be aware of it. Why, oh why, did this have to happen? This was a fantastic life. Maybe my best life. But agony swept over me, and I demanded to know what I have done wrong to deserve this painful awareness of her pain. I loved her more than I loved anything that was alive in my life. But all she will remember of me is that I'm gone. I will never return. 
we would never touch each other again. Her grief would surround her and suffocate her ability to enjoy life ever again. I continued to drift, and I was aware that the deep love I had felt for her was something that we never spoke of. I never said, Dear one, please, when I am gone, please continue your life. Marry, enjoy life. She had loved me so deeply, but I realized that love is a two-way street. During my life, I had received and taken much love from her and everyone else. But did I return the love? Did I shower her with the kind of love that she gave to me? Why had I not insisted that she marry? The joy of children and grandchildren was a missing part of both of our lives. I continued to drift along with the angels that were arriving to greet me. My anguish prevented me from fully enjoying the moment. I should have taken the time when I was alive. I should have stopped and insisted that she enjoy her life. I should have insisted that we both enjoy the love while we had it. And then I became aware of myself again. I immediately cried. I cried for his grief, for his sadness. It physically hurt me to know the depth of his despair as his past life memory began to wear off and I became more present in myself. I gradually became aware that this pain this deep pain that he felt in that moment seemed somehow familiar. Yes, this aching feeling in the pit of my stomach was indeed familiar to myself. It was the same feeling I was experiencing when I was away from my children and grandchildren. The feeling that I had to share one last word with my loved ones during specific moments. It was the same memory, the same feeling. I could almost smell, feel, taste that past life memory that bound all of these emotions together. It tugged at the anxiety disorder that I was trying to leave behind. This life and my current life were connected with this exact moment of loss that he felt and I feared. I knew that different sensory triggers activated it. I knew I needed to work on this. Oh, I, I held this past life memory beside the memory from today when my grandchildren left and the emotion was the same. It radiated from a frequency that was so unique it could be compared with the smell of coffee completely different from any other memory. I had lived with this my whole life, and small snips of time, space, and memories flashed past. At the time of this memory, I was not seeking any metaphysical assistance. I had no Catherine Lehman in my life at that time. I had to heal myself the only way I knew how at that time. The idea of using past life therapy as a means to heal myself would not come to me for years. So I did what I knew to do in the only way that I knew to do it. I prayed. I prayed to God and I just prayed to the universe to please help me because I needed help. I thought I cannot do this myself. I need your help. Repairing me back to a whole human being I prayed to be shown the way, and I promised to follow if the doors were open for me. And soon I drifted into a long sleep that lasted all afternoon and all night. The next morning I felt exhausted. My body ached. My mind was dull. But that feeling of panic that had gripped me the day before was less like a knife. I took a deep breath. I could breathe easier. A journey to recovery had begun. I had setbacks and successes, but gradually the string of emotions subsided and eventually I began to heal. 
I later learned that I had somehow released that negative energy that was bound in that past life when he was departing and missing his daughter so much. It now hurts much less to think of Abu, Afsahar, and family members. Now, whenever I think of this life or experiences, the pull to drift back to those emotions, I imagine throwing pink flowers into the memory. Beautiful, sweet, lovely pink flowers for healing. I hope that our listeners have enjoyed my past life memory. For many reasons, this is one of my favorite lives because of the peace, tranquility, and happiness that Abu got to live in his entire life. And for other reasons, because this was the beginning of a healing moment for myself, it's a favorite of mine as well. And I'm always going to stop and listen when I hear anybody around me with the sound and the call to prayers, the sound of Abu, the sound of a bazaar, even the smell of incense. Thank you, listeners. Thank you to all of our listeners. If you have enjoyed our frequency journey today, please share it with your family and friends. Make sure to visit us at clovistia.com or you can follow us on Instagram and Facebook, where we have about a million followers over there. Until next time, please share your frequency.